Netflix does it again. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Welcome, friends. Jamam Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You, and I'm here to drop a little bit of sad news, I guess, because Archive 81 canceled by Netflix after one season. Now, the reason why I wanted to do this was, A, because I already did a rant on this show somewhere in the Etherverse, and I guess my rant was because I was disappointed in a show with a lot of potential that ended up being not as good as it could have been, and I don't like to see people not hit their potential. I want to see them hit their potential. So it's a, it's a long series, and it was on Netflix, and some of the things that I remember, there was a lot of hype about it. There was a lot of articles talked about it. There was a lot of people talking about the show, at least online. I don't know if everywhere else. No one I knew actually watched it except for me. But it was okay up until a point. And it was the video where I, I was saying that Netflix needs to edit some of this stuff down. The shows are too long. And the other thing that I had a problem with was, and this came to bite them back in the butt. And spoiler alert, guess what? They left themselves open for a season two when they didn't need to. And now it's an unresolved conclusion that fans will never get to see. And... You just didn't need to do that. You should have just stuck with the one. They were so confident that they were going to get a second series. Why were they so confident? Let's read the article below. Netflix has opted to move, not move forward with the second season of Archive 81. The news comes within two months of the January 14th debut. The horror drama starring Mamadou Athi and Dina Shahabi. The cancellation was somewhat surprising because it did break into net into Nielsen and Netflix's weekly top 10 ratings for originals. It was also briefly shot to number one in Netflix before being dethroned by Ozark. The streamer uh, was their laser focused on analyzing views versus cost. So I guess that the budget was too expensive. I don't know. They never give reasons for these, but here's why they were probably pretty confident about this. It was based on a supernatural horror podcast produced by James Wan's Atomic Monster, who James Wan has a deal with them. He did a movie for them that we also reviewed that was pretty bonkers, uh, Malignant. Did he do it for them or did he do it for HBO? I, he might have done it for HBO, but maybe they're trying to woo him over. It was written and executive produced by Rebecca Sonashine, who uh, I guess she's never been a showrunner before. Uh, but briefly, the show was about an archivist who takes a mysterious job and he's restoring damaged videotapes. The videotapes are this mystery about what happens to this woman that was from 25 years ago. And then their lives start to intersect as they show up in the same place and they're starting to try to track things down. Uh, let's see here. This for a Stranger Things director, Rebecca Thomas, helmed half of the series and executive produced it. So they had a lot of heavy hitters on this to get it canceled. So I'm a little surprised. It's a little strange that this thing would get waxed like this. But I, I thought it was important to bring it back up because who knows? It might get picked up by someone else. I somehow doubt it. I don't think there's enough people clamoring for it. But what we can do, I've noticed many websites, and this is Deadline, have reenacted their comments. Now, I don't know what's going on with that. I remember for a real long time, Yahoo had all their comments eliminated, but now their comments have been turned back on. So let's see what some of the people are saying. <laughs> this guy goes, wow, I was about to check this out, but I guess I don't have to now. Right. <laughs> They're like, I need to cancel Netflix. I'll probably forget for another couple months, and then they can come after me for sharing his girlfriend's password. Um, they don't need to renew it for second season. Sure. Uh, they claim this, this person, Shannon says that they hardly did any promo and only be referred by word of mouth. It was number one on the Netflix recommendation. So I don't know if they hardly did any promo. It could have been a great replacement for stranger things. No, it was way too niche for that. Uh, it wasn't going to do that. Uh, this this is a good one. I like this one, Barton. I love it when people stomp their feet and say they are done with Netflix. Of course they're not. Regardless, the show started out great, then went off the rails. 100% complete, completely agree. So, 
I agree. Uh, it, that sucks. Such a great show. I'm so done with Netflix. Blah, 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 blah. So you get the point. A decent show that could have been better, that needed some editing. Again, joins the world of Cowboy Bebop. Now that show had a ton of hype and not one soul watched it. Here you could have had some, some something build into a cult classic or something at least interesting. So there you go, folks. Netflix takes the axe down and takes it off the shelf and takes it to Archive 81 and chops it down. We will not find out what happens to these characters. It's a real shame because the ending was a little convoluted. Didn't exactly know what was going on there. And I uh, guess we'll never find out unless you listen to their podcast. Speaking of podcasts, you can catch our podcast. We discuss some horror movies there sometimes, but we also do fun news, entertainment stuff. We do reactions to things. Sometimes we do crazy food reviews. We review all sorts of stuff. But if you'd like to uh, check us out, you can. You can subscribe anywhere you want to. iTunes, Spotify, all those great places. You can catch us on Rumble here on YouTube. We also live stream 7.30 Eastern Standard Time, p.m. on Friday nights. Come join us. Join in all the fun. Come and party with the world. But for me, I'm already on to the next one. Thank you.